So hi there friends, welcome back to Lab at Home with the Museum of Life and Science. Uh, my name is Peregrine and Catalyst volunteer Caroline is gonna be moderating our chat today. Um, I hope that all of you will help lead our program with your own thoughts and questions and ideas in the moderated chat box. Um, as one of our friends in the chat was pointing out, the uh, topic of today's, or rather the title of today's lab is Water World. And we're gonna be talking about water. So first I wanted to turn the question over to all of you. What do you know about water? Or if I'm saying water, what do you think of? I think, oh, this is a great idea. One of my friends is saying water is a liquid. That's true. Oh, my friend, when they think of water, they think drinking water. I agree, especially during the summertime, we wanna be drinking a lot of water. And we say drinking because water uh, at, at room temperature anyway is, is a liquid. So I have my little, I have just a little cup of water. Very important to drink water. Water can come in different phases, right? We said at room temperature, which I looked up is apparently around 72 degrees um, at uh, kind of maybe a, a comfortable room temperature for humans. Water is a liquid. And oh, like my friend was saying, it helps you stay hydrated. Another friend is saying you can swim in it. Oh, this is great. But if it gets a little colder, I have a friend who was uh, mentioning snow. If it gets a little colder, water can change phases. It can become a solid. If it gets a little bit hotter, water can even turn into a gas. It can turn into steam or water vapor, right? So you can have different phases of water. You can have it as a liquid, a solid, a gas. We're mostly going to be talking about water in liquid form. We're going to be talking about something I don't normally think about when, I, um, when I'm just hydrating uh, with water during the summer. We're going to be talking about how sticky water is. And we're going to be using the term sticky until we introduce kind of our main idea term for, for the day, because I don't usually think about water as being sticky. Like if I take this cup of water and I dump it over my head, is it going to be sticky like slime and stick to my glass? What would happen if I dumped this on my head? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that if I dumped this on my head, it wouldn't be sticky. I would get wet. I agree. I think that it would just kind of stream out because it's a liquid. If I dump it over, it will, uh, it will spill, right? And I think that's because we always interact with water on a certain scale, right? We're usually interacting with a certain amount of water if we're gonna drink it. What we're going to do um, in our experiment today is we're gonna kind of zoom in and use some smaller amounts of water um, and, and kind of talk about how water is on a slightly smaller scale. So instead of a cup like this, we're going to be using, or I'm gonna start us off by using some smaller cups. I'm gonna start us off by using a cup like this and a cup <laughs> like this to talk about how sticky water is. Instead of saying sticky, we're gonna say that water has a high surface tension. Water has a high surface tension which means that at certain scales, it's really sticky. I'm gonna show you what I mean here by going to experiment cam. We're gonna do our experiment together in just a minute, but I, um, I love these little props so much. I just wanted to show you um, an idea that really helps me think about uh, the surface tension of water. But I wanted to start us off just talking about the idea of surface tension with my two little cups. Now, I have some water here. You'll notice that it's kind of yellow. That's because I put yellow food coloring in it to help us see it a little bit better. If you are using water to do our experiment together with us later on, it doesn't have to have any food coloring. This is just to help us out um, with our ideas today. So rather than dumping water on my head, I thought that we could talk about um, dumping out water in this small cup, right? Uh, by, by scooping it up like this, right, and then dumping it out. This is, this is what um, all of us in the chat were predicting, that if I dump a cup of water out, right, it'll just drop out of there. We can replicate this again. If I dump this over, right, the water will just dump out. And that's with a cup that's pretty small, but what if I used an even smaller cup? I'm gonna use this teeny, teeny, tiny cup. And I think I might even use some tweezers to help me hold it. This teeny, tiny little cup is gonna help us um, with our idea about, about what surface tension is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my tiny cup 
just like my other one. And I'm gonna scoop up some water in it. You can see it's got some water in it there. It almost looks like tea or maybe juice. What do you think will happen when I dump this cup out? When I turn this cup upside down? We have some really intriguing ideas in the chat. My friends are saying, maybe it won't pour out the same as the other one did, right? You know, if we have this one and we dump it out, it will pour out. But I have some friends saying, will it stick to the cup or maybe it won't all pour out? Let's find out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this upside down and we're gonna see what happens, ready? Let me try that again. So when I try to pour this out, even though my liquid is in there, it doesn't wanna come out because the water is too sticky. The surface tension of this water is too strong. Oh, this is a great connection. My friend in the chat is saying, it's almost like a solid. It does, it almost behaves like a solid or, or almost like a gel. So my water in here is kind of stuck. Maybe if I push really hard, <laughs> there you go. I think you may have seen a drop of that water fly out. It's really hard to get the water out of here because water really likes to hang on to itself. Water has a high amount of surface tension because it's very polar. All of the molecules that make up water love to stick together. So when we look at it on a smaller scale, right, we can see how the surface tension of water beats gravity, right? Instead of gravity taking it out of the cup like that, the surface tension keeps it stuck in the cup. There's one other way that we can look at this idea, and I wanted to show it to you um, before we started with our experiment today. And this is a really classic experiment um, that uses a bit of water and it uses a coin. Normally it uses a penny, but I like to, I'm gonna be using a dime today because I only had yellow food coloring. The idea behind this experiment is another way of showing how water is really sticky. It's really polar and likes to stick to itself. We can see it pretty well from this camera, but I was thinking about using a slightly different camera to help us get an even better look. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be using my Dino Light camera to take a close look. I'm gonna switch our view here and focus. Now we can see our coin very up close. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop a drop of water on it. Here's one drop of water. So tell me what you're noticing about my one single drop of water. When I put down a single drop of water, did it kind of spread out like a pool? Ooh, I have a friend saying, no, it kind of stuck. Right, when I put down my little drop of water, or when I make that two or three drops of water, it forms this big dome. Oh, this is a great observation. It's not spreading. My friend even termed it on um, there saying a bead of water. Exactly. That surface tension, just like my friend was saying in the chat, the surface tension keeps the water together. I can put a bunch of different drops of water, a really high number of, wa of water drops on the top of my dime before it spills. So what I'm doing is I'm putting a bunch of drops on pretty carefully. And you can see it's almost ballooning up, right? You can see the edges there. When you have large amounts of water, gravity kind of takes over and it's harder to see this, uh, this polar force of water and its surface tension. But when we get down close, it looks pretty cool. I haven't been keeping count, but that is a lot of drops oh, of water before Look what happened. It finally broke. The surface tension broke exactly what my friend was saying. If I add a lot to my dime, a lot to my coin, it'll all spread out like this. So it was almost like popping a bubble. I popped the bubble and all of my water spread out. I have another liquid here that's also orange, but it's not water. It's rubbing alcohol. And check out what happens if I put a drop of rubbing alcohol on it. So here's one drop of rubbing alcohol. Does it do the same thing as water? I'm gonna do a drop of rubbing alcohol and a drop of water. So here's my drop of rubbing alcohol over there. And 
a drop of water looks pretty different. Let's try that drop of water. Look at that, the drop of water is really large, right? And then our, our rubbing alcohol really flattened out. So we have those two different liquids. They look pretty similar, um, but we know that they have very different surface tensions, right? Rubbing alcohol, not a lot of surface tension. It's not as sticky as water is. Um, and when we add that water, we can get a lot more of that kind of ballooning, doming effect. So water has a lot of surface tension. It loves to stick to itself. What we're gonna do with that information is we are going to do an experiment together. We're actually gonna do two different experiments to take a look at um, water's surface tension. To do that, um, we asked you to gather some supplies. So for the first part of our experiment, you will need, of course, some water. Now, before I had mine in a little Petri dish and I do have a little Petri dish here in case we wanna use it, but I thought it might be easier for us to see if I was just using a little, uh, little bit of Tupperware here. So I have um, just a bit of water. This is probably no more than an inch or so of water. I don't need it to be very deep. It's more helpful for me if there's kind of a larger surface, right? If it's wider than it is deep. So I've got um, some water in a container here. Um, I have also got, this will be for later. I've also got some little pieces of paper. Now you can use just regular white paper or regular lined paper, but what I'm gonna be using here is cardstock paper. So it's kind of just a thicker paper. Um, it's it's uh, just a little less kind of flimsy than regular printer paper or regular lined paper, although you can use that. I'm gonna be using cardstock. Um, an index card is also perfect. I didn't have my index card, so I just used a little bit of, um, a little bit of this cardstock paper. We have our water and we have some scissors. So what we are gonna do is we are going to be testing floating different objects on the water and seeing if there's ways to make things float a little better. What we're gonna start with is we're gonna take our piece of paper and I want us to get this, uh, cut this down to a smaller size. We're gonna be cutting our paper in half. So what I'm doing is I'm just folding my paper in half. And I am going to cut it in half like this with my scissors. That way I now have two different pieces of paper to work with. And these pieces of paper are about the same size. I don't know about you, but when I think about things floating in water, I tend to think about, um, you know, are they a different size? Are they a different weight? Are they a different density? These two pieces of paper are the same, right? Um, they are more or less right there, the same shape, the same size. They're the same weight and density, but we're gonna change them a little bit so that they have one thing that's gonna be different about them. We're gonna fold them in some different ways so that their surface area is different. Now, we're talking about surface tension of the water, right? This is the surface of the water. The part of the water that's touching the air is the surface. We're gonna change the surface area of our paper. Surface area is just the amount of space um, that's touching the outside, right? So if I take my paper and I fold it like this in half again, you can go ahead and fold your paper in half if you're doing a lawn with me. If I put it in the water like this, the surface area that's touching the water is pretty small. It's only gonna be these two little parts. It's gonna be pretty thin, even though the whole piece of paper is the same size, the same shape. The way that we folded it means that it will have only a little bit of surface area touching the surface of the water. So this is gonna be our first piece, right? We have one piece that's gonna be like that. We'll put it aside for just a second. And I want you to take your second piece that you cut in half here. And I want you to start by doing the same thing. We're just going to fold in half like this again, but I wanna do something different with this one. 
and test it out. We're saying that um, with one of them, the surface area that will touch the surface of the water is gonna be very small. I wanna make our surface area bigger. I wanna make the part of this paper that will be touching the water, I wanna make it a little bit bigger to see if that changes how it interacts with the water. I'm gonna do that by folding up one of the kind of the little legs of my paper. I'm gonna do it like this. I'm gonna fold it up about maybe almost halfway here. So what I did was I folded it like that. I made almost like a little foot, right? So I have this edge like that. And I'm gonna do the same to the other side. I'm gonna to try to make it about the same, same kind of fold there. I folded it now so that rather than just having the edge of the paper touching the water, I'm gonna give it a kind of like a foot. That means that now these two strips will be touching the water. There's gonna be more surface area touching the water, whereas this one there will be less. So in just a second, I'm gonna take these two pieces of paper and I'm gonna put them down on the water at the same time. Before we do that, I want all of you to guess which one do we think will stay on the surface of the water? Which one do we think will stay on the surface of the water and not break the surface tension? And which one do we think the water won't be able to hold up? We have a really good guess. We have um, one friend who's saying um, the flat bottom will stay up longer. That's a great hypothesis. I love it. So we're thinking maybe the one with more surface area will stand up longer. Well, let's find out. Oh, we have another guess. We said um, that uh, we have a friend saying we think number two will. We have another friend saying that the foot will hold and the no foot will sink. Well, there is one way to find out. Um, if you're doing this along with me, let's go ahead and, and get our two pieces ready here. I'm gonna put them at the water in about the same time and we're gonna see what happens. Ready? Three, two, one. Now they're both doing a pretty good job, but if I turn it like this, maybe if I push this over like this, you can see that this one is starting to sink. Since they're both so light, they do a pretty good job at not breaking the surface tension, but this one is starting to sink, whereas this one is still floating. That was a great hypothesis. My friends were saying that the one with the foot will stay up longer, whereas the one without will start to sink. And you were correct. Look, when there is more surface area, when we're spreading our weight, the, the weight of this paper, over a greater amount of surface area, it will tend to stay up longer than the same weight with less surface area. Now, there's other parts to this experiment that we could do. We could try and see what other kinds of feet will work in holding up our, um, our piece of paper, right? What if I cut some little triangles out? Like that. So if I cut out some little triangles, it kind of changes the way that the weight will distribute across the amount of surface area. So I could cut up, I could cut it like this on the other side and test out, uh, test it out against a similar one like this to see if I cut out pieces, does that help my case? Does that help it sink faster? Or, or since the shape is different, will that help it stay up? There's a lot of different types of experimenting that we can do with this type of model by just cutting the feet to different shapes. I want us to get to one more experiment today, so I'm gonna pause this one where it is. But I hope that after today's experiment, some of you all will test out um, some different uh, foot shapes of our paper to see, if that affects, uh, to see if that affects how well it floats or not. We're gonna do an experiment that still involves our water and is also going to use some paper clips. I know I have more than two. I suggested we only need about two, so we can just use two but I have some extras just in case. We also need 
a little bit of dish soap or hand soap will also work. This is for another experiment to do with surface area. Right. So if I have a paper clip, and you're always, you're welcome to try this along with me. If I have a paper clip and I dump it in the water, what does it do? Does it sink or float? I can even pick this out again in case I did it too fast. Watch this. So I have my paper clip. Yeah, exactly. My friend was saying it, it just sinks. If I just plop my paper clip in there, it'll just sink. Right. And this is because the weight of the paper clip pushed down against the surface tension of the water because I just dropped it in and then it sunk to the bottom. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get a dry paper clip. I can just dry mine off on my paper towel here, but nice and dry. Same one as before. And I want us to take another one. So uh, we have two paper clips total. I'm going to take my white one and I'm going to bend it in an L shape like this. So I've taken my white paper clip and I've bent it in an L shape. This is gonna serve as almost like a little hook to help us lower our paper clip into the water really, really carefully, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna very carefully balance my paper clip on top of my little L shaped hook and instead of just dropping it in and disturbing the surface tension, I'm just gonna really gently lower it in. Now let's take some practice. I've been practicing a little. Let's see if I can get it. I'm really gently lowering it in. Aha, all right, there we go. We have a friend in the chat who was saying it's working for them. That's perfect. So now my paper clip is floating. You can almost see how it's pushing down on the water and it almost makes the water look like a gel around it, right? So that kind of shows us that same idea as when we were looking at our penny earlier, that the water likes to stick to itself and if we don't break the surface tension, it almost behaves kind of like this sticky fluid. So we have our nice floating paper clip because we were super careful and putting it in there. And I can try it with a few other paper clips too. Uh, Cause again, right, we were saying if we just drop it in like that, it will sink. But if I lower it in really carefully, then it should float. Awesome. Here's our last idea. We know that surface tension, right? Water has a high surface tension. We are going to use something to change the surface tension of the water. We're going to be using a surfactant. I'll ask Caroline to put that in the chat. We're going to use something that will serve as a surfactant. What I'm going to have you do is put just a drop of your soap into your palm here. And I'm going to take uh, my finger and I'm going to kind of just stir it up like this. I want you to do that and, and stir it up so that it has a little bit of lather, right? So it starts to foam up just a tiny bit like that. There we go. So as Caroline so kindly put into the chat, a surfactant is something that will uh, change the surface tension between two liquids. Specifically, it will change um, the uh, it will change the surface tension by lowering it. Remember when we were using before the um, the rubbing alcohol. The rubbing alcohol had a lower surface tension, so it didn't bead up as much. We're going to use this dish soap as a surfactant to the water to lower its surface tension to see how it affects the things that are already in our water. So I've got a pretty good lather going here. What I'm going to do is I have it on my finger. And I'm just going to stick it in the water. Now, I'm not going to disturb the water too much. I don't want to um, disturb my paper clips. But we're going to see what happens when I take my soap and I stick it ooh, <laughs> in the water. Friends, what did you observe happen? It happened really fast. I'm going to see. Um, I know I've already put a little bit of my surfactant inside of the water here. I'm going to see if I can quickly replicate my results here, or if the water tension has already been changed. Let's see. Whoops, <laughs> that one doesn't want to go. So what happened 
was I used my surfactant, I used soap as a surfactant and it changed the surface tension. It was lowered and it was so much lower that it could no longer hold the paper clips. Here, I'll replicate it for us one last time. Here's a regular clean Petri dish of water. I'm gonna do the same thing again and we'll watch it extra closely this time. I'm gonna carefully lower my paper clip into it. There you go. You can see by the shadow that it is floating. And I'm gonna do that same thing again. I just have a little bit of soap and I'm gonna get into a nice lather here on my finger. We know that our paper clip is floating now, but let's see what happens when I put my finger with soap inside of the water. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> so now you can see by its shadow that it has sunk under the surface of the water. So by using my surfactant, by using my soap as a surfactant, it changed the stickiness of the water. It almost made it less sticky. It didn't hold together as well, which meant that it could no longer hold the paper clip. So we've explored a couple different ways um, that water loves to hold together. It's really interesting to experiment um, with ways to make things float by changing their surface area or ways to make things sink by changing the surface tension of the water. We can use things like soap, but there's other kinds of things we can use as surfactants um, that we should check out. There are a lot of different household things like um, maybe different types of soaps. You could also try it with hair care products, anything that an adult says that you can use that's also skin safe to put on your skin, right? I would definitely encourage you to try some of those things out. See if there's anything else around your house that can change the surface tension of water, that changes the cohesion even of water, actually. Uh, Caroline just pointed out um, that it changes the cohesive force. So ways that we can mess with the cohesion of water. So we've done a lot of experiments with water today. You all have, been, have had some really, really amazing ideas and thoughts and questions. I wanna thank you so much for doing these experiments with me. I hope that all of you can, um, can continue experimenting after the program. I know I will be. I hope that also we can see you next week for Little Lab at Home. Uh, it's gonna be at Tuesday, four o'clock, the same time. I hope that we'll be able to see you all then. Thank you all so, so much for your time today. I hope that you have a great uh, remainder of your day. All right, see you later, friends. You're welcome. Yeah, see you next time.